Somebody who was with him would say, say, you know, I never heard you scream. And we all know the types and the techniques, the vicious methods of torture that the Baathists used to use against the believers. They said to him, we never heard your voice. We never heard you complain. He said, it is because all the time I was reciting the Quran and I was supplicating to Allah. They said to him, which supplication? He said, let me show you. He had hid a piece of paper with a beautiful supplication that he had placed inside his clothes and he would take it out in between the times that they would leave him and he would recite this. This is a man who had complete trust in the Almighty. This is a man who dissolved himself in the love of Allah wa ta'ala and he would say to people, rely on the Almighty. In 1990, he was forced to visit the Islamic Republic of Iran. And when he was forced, he went there and some people with him said, you know what, our family, our family in Iraq are under great threat. And we do not know whether they have enough money, their money or food. He would say to them, recite what Prophet Ibrahim had recited, which is what? Oh my Lord, I have left my family in a that barren place of land, which they had no rizq. Oh Allah, sustain them and give them whatever you desire. And when he would come back, they would say that yes indeed, it is as if someone was looking after them. This is conviction. This is belief. This is submission. This is a man who feared none other than Allah and was the crystallization of the verse in the Holy Quran. الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ رِسَالَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْشَوْنَهُ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Those who deliver the message of Allah, yet they have no fear for anybody because their fear is only for Allah, which makes them strong and resolute and defiant in the face of tyranny, in the face of Sayyid al-Shaheed, al-Sa'id, Muhammad, Muhammad Sadiq al-Sadr, when he would leave to go to his Barani one night, when he would go to spend the time with the people, to speak at the grassroots level, to connect with the masses, to hear their problems, to understand their concerns, to share their agony, to listen to them, to make himself available to them. The decision had been made several months before. He had been warned, yet he continued to be defiant. And he continued to struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On his return, his car alongside that contained himself and his sons, Mustafa and Mu'ammal, radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhim, these two shuhada do not normally, normally do, they do not receive enough credit or mention. The narrations, the people who narrated and who witnessed what happened next tell us that when those remnants of the regime surrounded the car and they fired at the car, those two individuals, the son of a Sayyid al-Shaheed, threw their bodies on the body of a Sayyid Muhammad. Muhammad Sadiq, to the extent that he remained alive. For an hour after this operation, he remained alive. He was taken to the hospital, yet the hospital was cornered and it was closed. And he met his Lord, Sadiran Muhtasiba. Fasalamullahi alayka, Sayyidi Aba Mustafa. Salamullahi alayka wa anta ma'al anbiya'i wa siddiqeen wa shuhada. وحسنا أولئك رفيقا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي اللهم على محمد وآله الطيبين الطيبين. story, if you like, of bringing Muhammad, Muhammad al-Sadiq al-Sadr and elements of his life much closer to us uh, here today, many years after his death. I'll talk a little bit about, uh, I want to tell you a little bit of the facts of his life. Sayyid Shaheed Thani was born in the 1940s and was an eminent student, of course, as we mentioned, of many great scholars, uh, but was also a teacher. And how does anyone who knows how the system works, you both 
study and teach at the same time. And my father was one of the few who had the pleasure of studying under him in the 70s. And of course, in the 1980, in 1980, after his, his great relative and teacher, Sayyid Muhammad Baq al-Sadr, had passed away, he had to uh, be aware of the circumstances and the pressure that was put on him, and went, of course, quiet for many years, until 1991, when the revolution, or the Intifada, uh, when the revolts happened and Iraq was excluded or removed from Kuwait, he became active and his movement began and particularly became prominent in 1992 after the vacuum left by Ayatollah Rabma Sayyid Khoui uh, after he passed away and for since from 1992 to 1999 when he passed away his movement grew and grew and touched the lives of many even after his death. Our next uh, section uh, is uh, through a different medium uh, if I can invite brother uh, to share a poem with us, or a few poems maybe, uh, about the Shaykh Sayyid. Uh, welcome him, Brother Nuri Sardar, wa salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. as to house intellect. This mind gifted was structured as to house intellect, yet it chooses to, from the cup of ignorance, drink, like the commander of a great ship sailing at sea. Like the commander of a great ship sailing at sea, daily sailing harsh waters, and daily at the brink of destruction, yet he wants it given to this sea, and to the deep fold of this ocean, watch his ship sink. A beautiful whole number Rather than seeing it multiplied, strengthened, he wants to see its division. A beautiful whole number, rather than seeing it multiplied, strengthened, he wants to see its division. He wants it broken down into the smallest pieces. Maybe so it's him that wields rule and decision. Maybe so it's him that wields rule and decision. Or maybe so this grand and beautiful religion. Or maybe so this grand and beautiful religion can fit into his own limited comprehension and with his limited mind he wants to hold the reins as to direct the religion to his own vision. It's this sad reality we face here in London. It's this sad reality we face here in London, maybe on every western shore that we sought asylum. Maybe on every western shore that we sought asylum. We see this religion no more than our own playground. We see this religion as no more than our own playground, rather than seeing it a sea of light and of spectrum. I wonder sometimes, was there none better to whom blessed this faith? Sometimes I truly wonder, was there none better to whom blessed this faith? Maybe to a man of free thinking, not to a youth with a tantrum. A man who can rescue us from our own ignorance and weld the right key as to unlock each conundrum. And yet still, day after day, with all that we have been blessed, Sometimes we see our religion as no more than a contest. And yet still, day after day, with all that we have been blessed, we still see our religion as no more than a contest. I'm Sistani, I'm Shirazi, I'm Khamenei. I'm Sistani, I'm Shirazi, I'm Khamenei. Till your identity becomes mine, I cannot rest because I am so insecure toward new ideas. When someone disagrees with me, I have to. I'm Sistani, I'm Shirazi, I'm Khamenei, till your identity becomes mine. I cannot rest because I am so insecure toward new ideas. When someone disagrees with me, I have to protest. Even me, and I'm just a poet. Honestly, even me, and I'm just a poet. Even I can't escape the clutches of people who even silence the test. We've been given a golden responsibility, Amani. We've been given a golden responsibility, this a blessing from our merciful almighty Lord. We've been given a golden responsibility, this a blessing from our merciful almighty Lord. We are enriched and our greatest weapons are our minds. We are enriched and our greatest weapons are our minds. 
whilst everyone else still bickers with arrow and sword, is there another faith that encourages free thinking? Sir? Is there another faith that encourages free thinking? Is there a ship that allows every idea to board? Is there a web to eat that to each idea's thread can connect that never snaps nor sinks even with the world? We are enriched and our greatest weapons are our minds whilst everyone else still bickers with arrow and sword. Is there another faith that encourages free thinking? Is there a ship that allows every idea to board? Is there a web that to each idea's thread can connect that never snaps nor sinks even with the world of world? We're free! Our minds can wander any plane and return. We're free! Our minds can wander any plane and return. Others forbid exploring change. Others forbid exploring change, and so they are jailed by their minds. We are free to think and learn, so we are free. We are free to think and learn, so we are free. When all ideas were thrown to pits, all died. We prevailed. When all ideas were thrown to pits, all died. We prevailed. So don't promote dividing us. Don't promote dividing us. Don't enslave the free. Don't enslave the free. If you breathe in ideas, ensure the wrong you've exhaled. If you breathe in ideas, ensure that the wrong you've exhaled, that which embeds itself in your bloodstream shall change you. That which embeds itself in your bloodstream shall change you, which is why the teachings of Muhammad and Ali we've inhaled, which is why the teachings of Muhammad and Ali we've inhaled. <laughs> Today I want to look at as Shaheed the Sayyid Muhammad Muhammad Salih al-Sadr as a symbol. Thinking how I can portray the symbol to you, my mind went back to the 1991 revolt in southern Iraq, in all of Iraq in fact, but I'm going to focus on southern Iraq. The fact that people had the courage to learn from their master Imam Hussein and stand up to the time of their time. Now this poem is from someone who fought and died in the revolt, and I want you to take yourselves now all to Karbala so you can understand this poem. I live, silhouetted the beacon of the free. I live, silhouetted the beacon of the free, yet when you visit Hussein, my picture you won't see. I live, silhouetted the beacon of the free, when you visit Hussein, my picture you won't see. O oh, Karbala's pilgrim, I die for your freedom. O oh, you who Hussein's dome on your eye is drawn and his grave you embrace, Know that if you gaze, know that, know that if you gaze, know that if you gaze carefully at its dawn, my picture you can trace. Oh, you, on, oh, you who Hussein's dome on your eye is drawn, and his grave you embrace. Know that if you gaze carefully at its dawn, my picture you can trace. I stand silhouetted, I stand silhouetted, and I only spawn on this very dome's face. For in his immortal name I was withdrawn, my soul pulled from its place. I stand. The gunman that peered from his minaret and felt the shed blood that was about to make this sand wet as a bullet's victim, I died for your freedom. For our honor and our very homeland, we all raised our own state. For our honor and our very homeland, we all raised our own state. In tyranny's eye, revolution we planned as to build our own fate. Yet alone we stood in what became quicksand as evil it would dictate our eternal fall and our own homeland our graves it would create. We stood against the impossible with passion for years. We breathed Hussein, I stand on oppression with eulogies rhythm, I die for your freedom. As our land, the devil's army would surround, Karbala, as our land, the devil's army would surround for freedom's own demise. In Abbas's shrine, the fearful murder mound that no speech could disguise. In Abbas's shrine, the fearful murder mound that no speech should, could uh, disguise. And his very grave, the mother's day would pound. His very grave, the mother's day would pound. They'd call to him for rise. Would the father of valor make no sound? Would the father of valor make no sound with the bloody sunrise? The shroud of death's coming, it soon veiled our eyes. Yet proud, the soul stood against it. And amongst cries, with wails as an anthem, I die for your freedom. When you enter and wade this ancient desert, be mindful where you've stepped. When you enter and wade this ancient desert, be mindful where you've stepped, for they bury us everywhere, no comfort. They bury us everywhere, no comfort, no shroud on us was kept. From this land, evil we had tried to divert, 
from this land evil we had tried to divert, but beneath the dust we were swept. The woman, the child, none was left unhurt. The woman, the child, none was left unhurt. Upon innocence they crept. They killed, they murdered, they pillaged. They killed, they murdered, and they pillaged. We did not have a name. We rose, yet they were toppled. We rose, yet we were toppled when no help to us came. But a forgotten phantom, I die for your freedom. Indeed, age after age, history repeats. Indeed, age after age, history repeats. Opened is the jealous eye. The passionate heart, the envious heart meets. With their clash comes our outcry. How often the lover his own mother greets beneath the sky. How often the lover his own murder greets beneath Kerbala's own sky, and only when the heart's fallen asks its beat, Mehdi, you've not come, why? Mehdi, you've not come, why? Your eye, O Mehdi, its source rise and source fall. Why wait? Why stay silent when for you oppressed call? Mehdi, tell your kingdom, I die for your freedom. Salli ala Allah, Salli ala I want all of you to just stop and picture. I want all of you to just stop and picture. I paint on my canvas, your minds, this picture, when the streets of Iraq are paved with this picture. Is he dead or alive, the second master? Is he dead or alive, the second martyr? I want all of you to stop and picture. I paint on my canvas, your minds, this picture, when the streets of Iraq are paved with this picture. Is he dead or alive, the second martyr? Whilst from Ali he took all his conduct, like Hussein, in silence he refused to conduct. Whilst from Ali he took all his conduct, like Hussein, in silence he refused to conduct. In the face of oppression he glared his conduct, saying, we don't bow down to tyrant nor oppressor. He who never the truth would he desert. He who never the truth would he desert, even in the scattered plains of this desert. Nor did his voice against oppression, he desert death before humiliation was his answer. Thirsty for a scholar's blood, this said down. Thirsty for a scholar's blood, this said down. Yet your blood, O Shaheed, yet your blood to him a poison. So damned is he now burning in hellfire, so damned. For with his death they chanted, Long live a summer. I want all of you to just pause and reflect. I want all of you to pause and reflect. Though martyred, knowledge to the people he reflects. Much like the sun and darkness away he reflects. His body gone but ever raised his banner. For all those who miss him, haven't they wondered? For all those who miss him, haven't they wondered on where his soul for all these years has wandered? For all those who miss him, haven't they wondered on where his soul for thirty years, for all these years has wandered? I say amongst the streets of Nejef he's wandered. I say amongst the streets of Nejef he's wandered. For even in death he remains a scholar. For even in death he remains a scholar. <laughs> One of the main uh, achievements of Sayyid Muhammad Muhammad Sadiq Sadiq was his ability to touch uh, and to uh, raise the levels of awareness of all sections of Iraqi society, the professional and the unemployed, the young and the old. He revitalized the youth uh, and he boosted the confidence of the average Iraqi citizen. And as the Sheikh mentioned, he did this primarily through the medium of his Friday prayer. You, I urge you all to look at these banners and read them once, uh, once the program is over. The one on the front here tells a great story of uh, the Sayyid starting one of his uh, Friday sermons with a dua. And it was a long dua. And he says after the dua, I bet all of you are thinking, when is the Sayyid going to finish this supplication? Because I want to hear what he has to say. And he says, I tell you, O people who want to listen to what I have to say, who is, whose words are better, mine or the words of the infallible Imams? In that light, uh, and to bring uh, the life uh, of the Shaheed back, uh, hopefully if we can get the technical to work, we will hopefully see a video uh, from one of the Friday sermons of the Sayyid, where he begins it with a supplication and invites all the members of the Friday prayer to join. Allah 
someone's opened up a lot of files. attention to how he touched the lives of every individual and how people followed him and how he brought himself down to the level of those people. Sadr al-Sadr 
Our final speech, if I can welcome our kind brother, Sayyid Hassan al-Sadr, we welcome him with a salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. helps us to stay on the path, gives us constant reminders about the path we chose to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his messengers, his last messenger, and his truly guided inheritors. People like Sayyid Muhammad as sadr other martyrs, other leaders, remind us of our pure attachment and adherence to Islam. By learning about these figures, you might wonder if they have given so much, what have I done for Islam? <coughs> Indeed, Sayyid Shahid al-Sadr al-Thani gave a lot to Islam. I'd like to thank my dear brother Sheikh Muhammad al-Hilli, brother Nuri, for shedding some light on the life of this great scholar, and leader, and martyr, and inshallah, over the next 15 to 20 minutes, I will mention four points with a conclusion about the impact of Shaykh Sadr al-Thani. First point. The first point which I would like to make is that scholars, leaders, figures like Sadr al-Thani should not be exclusive for a particular political party or a group of muqalladeen or a country or the people who lived with them during their lifetime. There is a problem in our community that we associate certain figures with certain groups and parties and we put them in a, in a bubble uh, surrounded by their Muqalladeen, people close to them, and then they say he's a scholar of this group, this party, this force, this country. That is indeed a disease that we should get rid of, rid of in our community. In 1999, there was no Sadriyin in Iraq. There was Muhammad al-Sadr and the people of Iraq. And that's how it should stay. It should stay for us today. Scholars like Muhammad al-Sadr are the scholars and the leaders for all of us, not for a particular group. And the same thing applies to people of the same caliber as Shaykh al-Sadr. My second point. I would like to remind you just there uh, bit of extension of my dear brother Sayyid Musa has already alluded to, of how Iraq was back in the 1990s. Brothers and sisters, most of you have been to Iraq after 2003, and probably the scene of a, a scholar reciting dua publicly in a masjid with people, many clerics and ordinary individuals raising their hands, repeating after him. You probably think this is very normal, common, easily done, accessible, we've seen it before. And my second point, I'd like to remind you, how was Iraq in the 1990s when this man was reciting du'a? Brothers and sisters, du'a in Iraq publicly was almost a crime against the dictatorship of Saddam Hussein. 
Her heart was a dark place. Believe me, her heart was a dark place where ordinary Iraqis had no access to religion and they had almost a destroyed, disfigured personality before this man appeared. Iraq was a dark place. We had no access to religious teachings and our personalities were almost destroyed, wiped out by Saddam. Would you believe me when I say to you, Iraq, Iraq's youth, Iraq's new generation had no access to religion? I'll remind you. We had no books to read about Islam. We had no libraries to go and pick a book from the shelf about Islam. Nothing. We had no scholars to ask, believe it or not. We couldn't see scholars in Iraq. They were a rarity. Most of them were either killed, forced to flee the country, or the ones who stayed are staying quietly at their homes. We couldn't see them. We couldn't go and visit them in the mosque of Husseiniyya to ask them a simple question. No books, no scholars. Not even religious individuals that we would you know, go to university and find someone religious and probably organize a program. We couldn't talk about religion in Iraq. If you are religious, you keep it to yourself. You don't talk about it. And no TV programs, no internet, this is back in the 90s, to teach us about anything in religion. Religious people were afraid to talk about religion. Religious couples were afraid to talk about religion to their children. Not because they hate religion, it's because they are concerned that you know, if I talk to my child, he's seven years old, he might go to school and tell his teacher that mom says, you know, according to Fatah, this is how she done, the tafsir of this eye is this. If my son says that, the school might know, the local Hezif headquarter might know, we will be arrested. So imagine, are you imagining how the new generation of Iraq is being formed and developing? Us with no access to religion? Do you think that we inherit religiousness from our parents? We don't. Most of you live here in this community and you've seen religious couples, a bit busy, they don't raise up their, they don't do religious education to their children, you've seen the outcome. The mother and father, mashallah, and the children are out on the street. So we don't inherit religiousness. So my question to you, how come how come the youth of Iraq today, those who lived during this, the time of this man, how come they were religious? No books, no scholars, no TV programs, no access to religious individuals. It's because of him. Iraq was a dark place where the personality of the average Iraqi was almost wiped out. The youth of Iraq in the 1990s were growing up with extreme fear from Saddam's dictatorship, from the state. You know, they've opened their eyes, they're in their you know, teenage, they're in their early 20s, and they have no initiative. They can't do anything. They can't think for themselves, because if they think, they need to take the permission of the state. There's no self-confidence. There's extreme fear of the state. You walk on your own. You're concerned that people might think when you, when you are with your four group of, of close friends, they might think, you know, what, what are they doing? What are they planning? So you kind of detach yourself from your friends, believe it or not. You want to explain everything you do. No self-confidence. No self-initiative. An extreme fear and no access to religion. That's how we, how we were growing up, until the sun appeared. And one of the worst things we were facing at the time in the 1990s was the fact that we had no role models to look up to. And here I'd like to remind you to either be a role model to the local community or help to educate people about the real role models. 
It's quite dangerous when the youth have no role models. Who's our role model? Saddam? We see him every day on TV when we have dinner. We look at his picture every time we open a newspaper. All the books are about him. Who are the role models? Imam Hussein? There were no lectures about Imam Hussein. A scholar? There are no scholars. Who are our role models? We don't know. Third point. Sayyid Sadr's movement, as my dear brother Sayyid Musa touched upon, a man who appeared to Saddam's dictatorship as a simple man, as someone who is harmless. 1992, a vacuum by the death of later Grand Ayatollah Sayyid al Khoui, the regime wanted to utilize this idea of, you know, uh, Iranian born scholars or you know, uh, Arab, or those of Arab origin, you know, we could use this conflict. Let's find out a, a simple and a harmless man that we could try and give a push, open the door for him, see he, if he can infiltrate the Hawza. And they thought that Muhammad al Sadr was this man. They thought he was this man. Sayyid al-Sadr had a, a famous statement. Aradūna jisra fattakhadnāhum jisra They wanted me as a bridge to get to the house. I took them as a bridge. Have you heard of a man who tricked Saddam Hussein? He's called Muhammad al-Sadr. Have you heard of a man who managed to manipulate the world's best intelligence services and security forces, Hamad al He took them as a bridge. Do you remember the verse that says when Musa was a child and the soldiers picked him up in the palace? The verse says, In Fir'auna wa Haman wa Junudahuma kanu khata'in. They made a mistake by picking this child from the river. That's the Qur'an. إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجِنُودَهُمَا كَانُوا خَاطِئِينَ I say, Saddam. And the whole of his regime made a big mistake when they allowed this man to take his first steps because after that, no one could catch him. What did he do? He got the youth into al Hawza. For the first time in Iraq, we saw clerics walking around in villages and towns. We never had, we never saw clerics in Iraq. There were no turbans in Iraq. In the early 90s, we saw them. He said, them, come, come to the house. Got more clerics. People started to talk about religion. Why? Because these clerics were sent out into the districts, into the villages, into the towns to talk about religion. You wonder why people until today have so much attachment to him? It's because of he sent people to reach out for all and everyone. All sects of society. He revived the religion. He actually revived it. Suddenly, religion became a common topic, a common discussion topic. You know, we used to talk about Musa uh, Salat and uh, novels, then we start talking about religion. Suddenly, religion was a, a common thing to talk about. Suddenly, there were clerics around. I'm not saying there were scholars, because there was, there, were, there was no time to create scholars. It's a race between you and Saddam. So what could you get out of it? Get basic clerics, send them out. So the race began. Clerics were out on the street. People start talking about religion. And he started destroying the ill traditions of our society. The ill traditions. Ever wonder why the, the poster, the advert for this event was the revivalist and the reformist? Because he reformed our ill understanding of religion because of tradition. My dear brother Sheikh Al Hilli and Sayyid Musa talked about oh, no hand kissing, no stereotyping, you know, people who are not religious. Out, you know, out of the room, out of the Husseiniyya. Religion is just us. We are the ones who live in Karmiya, Karbala, and Najaf. What about the rest of Iraq? We don't care. Nothing like that. Reach out for all of them. 
no stereotyping. No short, hour of, no short hours of teaching. The house is known to have a very, surprisingly, a very uh, uh, strange routine of very short hours during the day. Muhammad al-Sadr used to teach morning, midday, prolonging the hours of teaching, get people more productive, get people to study hard, not just uh, uh, an hour a day. No old syllabuses. He formed a Southern University in which he introduced, this is by the way back in the 90s, where he introduced maths, physics, chemistry, biology to teach at Hausa students. This is not the Islamic Republic where the system is yours. This is in Iraq. So my fourth point, the impact, the results. And I'm not saying that say the Sadr managed to create a perfect generation. No way. But at least he opened the door. He opened the door for all Iraqis, not, not just for those who followed him. If you wonder, well, brother, you were talking, you know, you've been talking about Sadr the Sadr and impact on Iraqis. We've seen religious people in the 90s, and they were not followers of Hamad al-Sadr. You know, why are you saying that it was because of him? Yes, I do say it's because of him. Do you know why? Because Sayyid al-Sadr has a famous statement in which he said, from Minbar al-Jum'ah, he said, many people are standing against the Friday prayer. There are many scholars, by the way, against establishing Salat al-Jum'ah in Iraq. And today these scholars have Salat al-Jum'ah. And I say, what do you think is more rewarded? Praying Salat al-Jum'ah at the time of Saddam or now? And I'll leave you to answer this. Anyhow, so he said, many people are against me praying Salat al-Jum'ah. But I tell you, these people shall benefit from me establishing Salat al-Jum'ah. And by Allah, they did. Yes, not all Iraqis followed Muhammad al-Sadr. We, we never claimed that. We never claimed that he had all Iraqis behind him. But even those who were walking past the mosque, if you see at the back, not everyone was praying Salat al-Jum'ah. Some people were Masjid al-Kufa just because they were walking. Even them benefited from seeing religiousness back alive in Iraq, because they, were, they could, at that time, become religious, even though they're not with Muhammad al So yes, I do stand by my claim that all Iraqis benefited from him, not necessarily they all followed him. And about the personality, it was back. We were able to make choices. We got to Salat al-Jum'ah despite Saddam's disapproval. For the first time in Iraq, the young men and women were allowed to have an opinion, make a, deci a decision, make an initiative, do something about it, not be afraid, afraid of Saddam's <coughs> intelligence services. We know they were taking pictures and holding notes, but it doesn't matter. There was an overwhelmingly majority of people attending, so fear was outside. He taught people to demand, brothers and sisters. You see the Egyptians today demanding? You see today the Yemenis demanding freedom? Muhammad al-Sadr taught us to demand back in 1998. He said to release the prisoners, as salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. To make the right to come back, salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. To re-establish salat al jumaa al-Nasriya, salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And he taught Iraqis to say, Nureed, Nureed, Nureed. We demand. Saddam's time. An average Iraqi allowed to demand? It was Muhammad al-Sadr who told us that we could demand. Publicly, we could demand. We are ever so proud of the Arab Spring in 2011, 1998. Iraq, isolated from the rest of the world, and Iraqis were shouting, we demand. Not when there's internet jazeera in Arabia airing your demands to the rest of the world. So brothers and sisters, the conclusion. The conclusion is, on my fourth point about say the Sadr, is that we should learn from him. We should learn that no matter who do we do taqlid to, we should support our scholars, our religious figures. It doesn't matter who your marja is. If someone is taking the first step, he's confronting the enemy, back him. Back him. 
Yes, you have, you know, well, he could have improved his vocabulary, he could have improved the way he talks. I'm not sure about what he said the other day. If he's up on the front line, back him. Conclusion is that we should have our leadership as a Hawz al Almiya Sharifa. Sayyid Muhammad al Sadr, you saw in the first clip, he told people that not Muhammad al Sadr is the leader, Al Hawza is the leader. Today, there are global initiatives to destroy Al Hawza, to infiltrate it. Make sure you hold Al Hawza as an institution, as your leadership. He died for it, and so did many of our martyrs, and we should honor their sacrifice. Religiousness is not inherited, brothers and sisters. Make sure you work on the new generation of the community. And make sure you work on the new generation in Iraq. Please, don't assume just because you have easy access to Ziyar and there are a couple of channels, don't assume they will inherit religiousness. Make sure you're in contact with them to bring them closer to the religion. And the last thing I would say is, even if people stand up against you, even if people resist you, even if you <coughs> think you're on your own, like Muhammad al sadr keep pushing. You're racing against time. And the same people who are against you, maybe, after your departure, shall benefit from what you've done. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Thank you very much, Sayyid Hassan. Those reminders that the Sayyid is, is not of one particular group, he was for all Iraqis, if not beyond even Iraq, the impacts he had. And it's important to remember the context in which he was fighting in, in which he was working in. We do not judge our leaders on what we see around us today, we judge them in their own context. Our final segment uh, of today's, tonight's event. Uh, is some uh, poetry, uh, after which, if I can uh, just remind you that there will be dinner served downstairs, if I can ask the brothers to stay here when uh, the, the poetry finishes, the sisters to go down, uh, and then the brothers to go down afterwards. So please, brothers, don't go down now or any time soon. Uh, if I can ask you all to welcome uh, our brother, Mullah Ali Fadun. Father, we will salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. references uh, St. Muhammad Baqar al sadr but as I'm sure you are all aware, the pure family of the, the Sadr family all held one banner and all held one uh, initiative and one goal, and uh, that is that a citizen, wherever they may be, may stand up for uh, oppression. Salaam Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The day when men all gather together to be judged The gaze of angels is caught by one who seems so unloved He seems different but by the tyrants of his 
Time is judged The blood that flows in his veins Not like any other blood The day when man's deeds show him to be of saints or devils They ask him, he who looks like a rose stripped of its petals And eager for his answer are all the watching angels He answers with his heart ridden with wounds as his medals He answers with his heart ridden with wounds as his medals He says I'm Iraqi and testifies my blood and skin I'm from the land that has endless prophets buried therein A land with so much spilled blood that it's holy was thin The land of Noah and Ibrahim, leaders of men and jinn This land, the kingdom of Ali and the dust of Hussein Its roots are religion and flows courage within its veins The garden of Eden, how many of these it contains Pure bodies ridden in its sand and so holy its grains your bodies ridden in its sand and so holy its grains Yet, O oh, angels, you ask about the wounds within my heart When I said I loved Ali, tearing of new wounds would start by a tyrant that flowed through him hate red a black heart that which lasted to tear the minds of the Shia apart a lust that wanted in us since the old and younger abuse he who would murder sons and charge mothers for Used. He'd take away husbands and leave wives bewildered, confused To who claimed the love of Ali, every right would be refused To who claimed the love of Ali, every right would be refused Yet from the voice of the oppressed comes voices of heroes He who stands up to our tyrants and shields us from our foes He with every strike against him continues to oppose and come Puts us with knowledge to remove from us ours The crown of our heroes Muhammad Baqir al Sadir. He who when tyrants pushed against us He pushed back harder When our hope was ever dying He'd make hope with his pen he made us, with his pen made us with our religion even prouder With his pen made us with our religion even prouder He who went tortured for his, he who went tortured for the words which he wrote with his pen 
When released with his wounds, he just use it to write again. He learned from his grandfather Hussein to fight oppression. Learned with a contented heart, assured its revolution. Yet I tell you, angels, the tyranny of our state. That they would add the light of a scholar to its death rate And with his blood upon their hands a message they dictate A grip of tyranny, his blood on their tongues they narrate A grip of tyranny, his blood on their tongues they narrate but oh angels, I wish by the soul of the first martyr That he were alive to witness the end of all disaster When we strung this tyrant's neck, now but him is creator We tore his pictures and replaced them with Sardil's pictures we saw his pictures and replaced them with Sadil's picture. And beyond that, so angels, I wish he were here to witness. As we try to build from a water land, a land of bliss. With an eagle's honor, we replaced a set. With an eagle's honor, we replaced a snake shadowed his Living are his words whilst tyrants' memories we dismiss. Oh, angels, I miraculously from the land which he rose born. And with the first martyr we have heroes, very good Men of prudence who make me proud to my nation adore. The badge of honor on its chest the world through ages wore. Oh angels, I'm Iraqi from the land which he rose and with the first martyr we have heroes buried galore Men of prudence who make me proud to my nation adore The badge of honour on its chest the world through ages wore The badge of honour on its chest the world through ages Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu thank you very much It only leaves me uh, to give a few final announcements First of which of course Please brothers stay here uh, after the program Let the sisters go down first uh, and that there will be a English, uh, sorry, there will be an Arabic program tomorrow in this very same place uh, at 5 p.m. for those who'd like to uh, attend. Uh, I thank you on behalf of all the organisers uh, of today's program, and I will be end as I started. We are here to commemorate the life of a great man, a great leader, and if we cannot remember him, uh, if we can remember him one day a year. Uh, then great, but if we can remember him more, then even better, and we should try and remember his lessons uh, every day. Uh, I think it's appropriate to end today's program with a Surah Fatiha on the life of a Sayyid, a Shaheed, a Sayyid Muhammad Muhammad. Sa'ad al Sadr proceeded with a final salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allah,